Today, we're taking your health back with me, Wendy Lowell. We are coming to you from our studios in downtown Honolulu at the ThinkTech uh, Hawaii Studios and from my home office in Makiki. Today, we shall take you down memory lane with Chantel Weaver, who is the daughter of Spence Weaver, the founder of Spence Cliff Corporation. Aloha and welcome Chantel Weaver. Aloha, welcome. Thank you. Before we get started, let's talk a little bit about the founders of Spence Cliff. So please share a little bit about your father. My father, Spencer Fullerton Weaver Jr. and his brother, Clifton Stokes Weaver, co-founded Spence Cliff Enterprises in 1939. Wow, lots of history there. From 1939, they started this, but I understand that your father didn't get his start in just restaurants in the beginning. There must have been another passion in his career. What did he do before he ventured into restaurants? Well, he was a graduate of Yale University, and he also went on to college. And his father was from New York. And so I think he followed in his father's footsteps in real estate. Wow. So share with us a little bit about what, what, what kind of real estates did he dive into? I think my father was interested in business development somehow, and he was able to, you know, find this niche in Hawaii and turned it into a restaurant corporation. Wow. I know you have your, your family's name on many um, very famous hotels in New York and the likes of. Just give us a few um, hotel names that your family is involved with. Well, my grandfather and uh, his partner, Leonard Schultz of Schultz and Weaver, designed many of the um, famous landmark hotels, such as the Royal Hawaiian Hotel, the Waldorf Astoria, and many others as well. I know that you were in New York and um, you went to visit one of the hotels. And tell us, what, what was that like? We wanted to visit the Park Lane Hotel, which is one of the hotels that my grandfather not only owned, but he also lived there um, after they lived at the Waldorf Astoria. And it was, it was a nice experience to see what um, my grandfather actually built. And it brought you back into a different era, the era of the Park Lane Hotel. Yeah, what a beautiful era and time that was yeah. with all the fancy dresses and all the pomp and circumstance of just going out and dressing up. Don't we just miss those days? <laughs> Very much so. <laughs> right? I mean, like here in Hawaii, dressed up is a um, nice pair of slipper versus <laughs> versus stockings and nylons and high high heels and just the likes of. I love those that era. I love the day that we yes. could dress up like that. And wow, I bet you when you walked into that hotel, you just could feel all the history and all the romance as well in that hotel. Exactly. Thank you very much for yeah. reminding me. <laughs> so um, I heard that your father had a liking towards hot dogs, and I didn't know this until uh, I read a little bit and I heard you speak on it, but I believe that it was a company called Swanky Frankie. So please share with us what uh, Swanky Fran Frankie is all about. Well, the story that I had heard is that my father came here around the world with his father, Major S. Fullerton Weaver, the architect, and they fell in love with Hawaii, he and his brother. And my father remembered the beaches, and there was no one servicing the beaches at that time. But yet he did remember that there were some hot dog carts in New York that were servicing the longshoremen. So they bought the franchise of six stainless steel hot dog carts for $30,000 in 1939 and brought it to Hawaii. Wow. And so where were the swanky Frankie hot dog carts? Um, where were they parked? They were actually parked at the boarded up mushroom drive-in on Inner Road, which my father and his brother purchased, I believe, to be able to service those hot dog carts so they could replenish them when they came back from, you know, selling all the hot dogs and hamburgers and drinks at the beaches. So that was, uh, so they managed um, the the. the Carts, or they supplied other carts? They managed the carts and resupplied, wow. restocked those carts. Now, if anything, Chantel, I think you should bring back 
Swanky Frankie. <laughs> <laughs> I, what a catchy name. I mean, it sounds so cool and so swanky. You know, it's like, wow, classy hot dog. And I think you shouldn't have vegetarian hot dogs, hot dogs with sauerkraut and all the likings up. Everyone goes so crazy true. over hot dogs. So true, because you can put anything on it. Yeah, and make it any from any country or any, you know, any level. Plain hot exactly. dogs, just ketchup, ketchup and mustard, but you can swank it up if you want to. And that's what this is all about. So that would be something maybe you and I should talk about. <laughs> we, we can. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's your family legacy. This is where it all began, right? Yeah, and now, you know, lunch wagons are the thing. Right. So right? I don't know if my father started that lunch wagon thing back in 1939 or not. Right. But wow, what history. And people would come from all over the world just because of the name and the history behind it. And yeah. we could glamorize it. I mean, look at you, Miss Glamour, Miss Glamour Tushi over there, right? <laughs> you could be on the cover girl holding that hot dog. People would come. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I know there are so many, many um, restaurants. I believe there's at least 50 or more that your family has started. But one of my favorites, of course, is the Tahitian Lanai. And um, I know it was one of the flagship uh, restaurants for a long time. Can you share with us maybe one of your fondest memories of Tahitian Lanai? I think my fondest memories is that um, there was a bungalow or a hut named after me, Princess Moyari. Uh -huh. And it was an open air area with a swimming pool and you could look out over the lagoon. So I just love that outdoor feeling. And they had wonderful Tahitian Lanai banana muffins, yes. which you've tasted, Wendy. Yes. And also delicious popovers. Yes. So not only did you have the ambiance, but you also had the, um, you know, the food. And you also had that, um, well, my father and my family went there a lot. I love, I love just the whole idea of those bungalows, those huts. And we used to sell those huts out like crazy. Um, I say we because I did work there for a short time and I just loved yeah. every minute. And believe it or not, before Taisha and I, I was very shy and quiet. Mm -hmm. And um, I got a lot of training from Tahitian and I because it really taught me to embrace who we are as a local, locals, as well as embracing the visitors that we had or that came from all over the world to just dine at the Tahitian Lanai. So mm -hmm. lots of fond memories and growth for me as well at the Tahitian mm -hmm. Lanai. <laughs> so I know that you guys, are, of course, Tahitian Lanai is Tahiti from Ta the name is from Tahiti. And I know that um, there's a lot of story behind Spence Cliff and Tahiti. Tell us what is the relationship be between Spence Cliff and Tahiti? Well, my father married my mother in 1959. And because he was married to a Tahitian, he could own property in Tahiti. So my understanding is in a year later, 1959, they were able to build the Hotel Tahiti as a traditional Tahitian hotel, as you can see here. And because of that, my father also, um, you know, was able to acquire the Tahiti Village Beach Hotel, which is only, the only hotel on the White Sand Beach on the island of Tahiti. Wow. And so you, as a young lady, spent a lot of time in Tahiti. Is that safe to say? Yes. Uh, I think because of the business, my father had to go there quite often. And so we would spend the summer months there. So I had to learn French and Tahitian because I played with my cousins who didn't speak any English. Wow. And so that's why you also have such a passion for that country, those islands, and mm -hmm. um, your your Tahitian, your your French is like amazing. I mean, you even carry a slight accent. Do you know? Do you, you. you knew that, right? Yes. Yeah, some people yeah. say I have a Italian accent or a Spanish, right. accent, and I'm not Spanish. <laughs> yeah. So I hear some accent going there, and it's it's beautiful. So don't ever lose it. Thank but Tahiti, you. I mean, what are your fond memories of Tahiti growing up there as well? Gosh, uh, we had the run of the house. We had two hotels. We could have anything we wanted, anything to eat, anything to drink. We were catered. You know, the employees treated us like family and watched over us to make sure that we were safe. And I was able to snorkel and paddle canoe in front of our Hotel Tahiti Village Beach Hotel because it was, you know, like turquoise blue oceans with the reefs there. And um, just a lot of good memories, just 
being able to play in a safe environment. What a great, great um, experience and childhood you had. And um, that that's probably why you're so balanced and successful today. <laughs> your upbringing was solid. So I know that your father is a true businessman. I've met him many times, um, and, but he cherished his family so, so much. Was he gentle? Was he a gentle and loving father? Oh, yeah, he, he really was. He really loved my sister and I very much and um, spoiled us. I, we've got all kinds of gifts. I got a brand new Lincoln Continental on my 16th birthday. We were showered with all kinds of jewelry, anything we wanted, actually. And also, I had an older half brother who took, wow. you know, he took good care of him as well. Wow. And so, what color was your first car? Yeah, that was my first car, a Lincoln what color. Pink? No, it wasn't pink. It was, uh, I think, like a taupe color, I think, or brownish, golden brown color. Oh, I see. He wanted to tone you down a little bit, even though you had the best looking <laughs> car in town, right? Possibly. Yeah, tone you down a little because you were, uh, even as a young lady, I'm sure you were as beautiful as you are today. <laughs> so back in the day, Hawaii didn't have a lot of restaurants and not a lot of restaurants on the ocean front. But I know that you had also the Fisherman's War. Yes. And it did have that claim that it had ocean view or water view, which I so desire. Whatever happened to the Fisherman's War? Well, uh, several years ago when OHA had acquired it, I actually went to the meeting with some of the executives and I pleaded with them to save the building because it was a historic building and we could prove that. Um, however, I wasn't successful because they want to develop that area, you know, and I, I can understand that as well, but I wish they would have tried to save a historic building. Right. And, you know, um, yes, I think... If it was maybe of this day where people are more out, outgoing and vocal, maybe you would have had a better team behind you to help you fight because it's a shame that the Fisherman's Wharf is not there. It's truly a shame because Hawaii, being a water country or water state, we should have a Fisherman's Wharf. We should have that whole wharf built up with lots of businesses. Um, selling retail as well as food and people to come down and stroll along that way. Um, if they had kept that building and revitalized that area, it would have been so um, admirable to have that here. But now when you go down there, all we have is memories. Yes. And what, <laughs> but what great memories, uh, Chantal, that uh, was created there. And going back to that slide, I know that they had that picture of the menu with that happy face. And, yes. you know, again, I did work at the Fisherman's Wharf as well. I had two jobs with Spence Cliff. One was in the day at Fisherman's Wharf, and at night I would be a hostess at the Taisha Lanai. But I remember those menus, and I just thought they were the cutest things. They, the kids would come and hook them around their ears and have their little cakey menu. So, the, the, I mean, that tells me that your daddy, he really admired children and the family, and he really honored them. That's probably why he had all these goodies for them. Is that right? He did, as well as the, the treasure chest. We had several treasure chests in our different restaurants so that the kids could get a free toy. Right. And, you know, that was also another, wow. Because I just, being that I worked in these restaurants that have them, which are your two restaurants, I thought all restaurants took care of their people that way, their customers and their cakeies. But now that I think about it, you guys were special, with, especially with the, uh, the cakey menus as well as, as that toy chest. I mean, they weren't like, you know, diamonds and, and rubies, but they were toys that kids would go in and, and fish through and grab one, and yes. then it would occupy them. And it was a gift from your company to the families that dined there. It was a mahalo gift. And that was amazing. Yeah, it was. It was a mahalo gift, thanking the children and the families for coming and enjoying our restaurants. Yeah. You know, I got to talk about the Tahitian and I, and I know you had 50 plus restaurants, but these two are close to my heart. So I'm going to talk about the Tahitian and I again. Oh. So it had a personality of its own, I know. And it felt so warm and inviting um, to locals as well as all the visitors. It was a must while visiting Hawaii. What do you feel besides the bungalows? What do you feel made the T Tahitian and I, I used to call it TL, so special? I think it was probably the Polynesian decor. And we also mm -hmm. had 
what we call the piano bar. Yes. <laughs> All our customers would love to come and, you know, just sit around the piano bar and sing and enjoy themselves. Yeah. As well as the Taisha and I banana muffins, the popover, right. and the chicken curry in the papaya. I mean, there's and so many. Also, also yeah. <laughs> that's where I learned to make table side Caesar salad. Oh my God. Okay. And I had, you know, I'm a country bumpkin from Miley, right? But they had to teach me how to make this salad. I'm like, what is this with a raw egg and garlic and you mash it up with stinky uh, uh, anchovies? But you know what? I, I perfected it. I mastered it. I used to get choke tips from that table side service until to today. I That's still awesome. make that same recipe um, that I learned at Tahitian and I and um, yeah, that's my claim to fame is that I still make it and everybody loves, loves it. You but, know, there's something about making it table side, which was really special. It was, you know, being made just for you and your guests. Right. right. And, that's you know, uh, like you said, that piano bar, everybody came pouring in, yes. pouring in to go sit at that bar. That bar was like lively and hopping. And I remember, I think the pianist where her name was Marion. Yes, Marianne? I think there was a yeah. Marion. Yeah, she used to come in and sing, and everybody would sing along with her and, of course, drink and, and be merry. <laughs> but you know what? That's what the piano bar is all about. Yeah. And you know what? Never have too many of those around back in the day. So true. Right? So you guys are cutting edge. I loved it. So, again, mm -hmm. I know with over 50 restaurants with all very different culinary selections, you've had at least one steakhouse. So tell us about the ranch house. Oh, gosh, the ranch house, that was a family restaurant. Yeah. Um, and, and I think the reason why my family took it over, because it used to be M's Ranch House, is because in the Aina Haina area, there really wasn't any place for families to go. Right. And the families would love coming there. I remember the treasure chest. I remember the um, breadsticks that they would have on the table mm -hmm. with a mush uh, marshmallow sauce. And you could dip those uh, breadsticks in, which occupy not only the children, but the adults as well. Right. Yeah. And wow. we also had connected to that, the bar area, and we brought in a lot of very famous um, entertainers. I remember uh, Skippy uh, and Israel Kamakavivo Ole, the Makaha Sons, I believe it was, right. Romana, and so many other entertainers as well. Yes. And I know your papa, he loved his employees. My mother worked at Top Swaipahu. She oh. probably was there from the very beginning <laughs> until she um, left and went to heaven. But she oh. worked there. I think she has all those diamonds on her pin, like you said. Yes. And that was cutting edge back then as well, that they would give each employees after, was it 20 years or? Uh, I think pin. after five years, they got five the years. pin, the gold and they pin. they decorated it with diamonds or some stuff. Yes. So I still have it. In fact, the next time I see you, I want to show right. you that I kept it very dear to my heart. Yes. So Spence Cliff, um, they supplied so many great memories to so many families. And I'm just I, knowing you and I know your heart to continue to revive it and keep it alive. Um, I'm going to be right there by your side because I, I'm Thank part you. of that that legacy so um i know your passions for your dad's legacy lives on but what's next for what you want to do with spence cliff well i'd like to honor his memory and doing so i'd like to create a documentary to honor his legacy mm -hmm. with all the uh 50 plus spence cliff restaurants but more importantly, to honor the employees such as yourself and your mother and others who made Spence Cliff what it was. Because without all of you and our customers, our loyal customers as well, Spence Cliff wouldn't have become as great as it was. Mm -hmm. Yes, and it was great. So how about, I know you, you talked about a documentary. How about, yeah. are you preparing yourself to write a book? Yes, I'd like to write a book as well because I've already started a PowerPoint. So why not, you know, document <laughs> all of the memorabilia that I do have? Yeah, my girlfriend, your PowerPoint probably had like 20 or 30 shots. You <laughs> probably have <laughs> a few thousand shots that you are going to have to thumb through. I mean, thousands with yes. all the years of memories of people that came into your lives, into your restaurants from all over the world. 
Um, it's It should be phenomenal, this book and even the documentary. And if there's any way we, anybody out there can help Chantel to put this into a documentary, I think this is well, uh, it's the time is, is now that we get this to um, come to fruition. Thank right? you so very much. I really appreciate that. <laughs> and you know, um, Chantel, I know a few years ago you had created a reunion with the employees. Don't you think it's time for another one? Because we're still out there, we're young and vibrant, and we still have the memories. It's so good to just sit down and talk story with everybody. So can you tell us, is that in the planning? So that sounds like a great idea. I wanted to um, launch my documentary or what have you, maybe possibly by the end of the year so I can invite former employees and former customers to come and just, you know, relive that era that was so wonderful that I missed even to this day. Right. I think that's a great idea. So again, any Spenska uh, workers uh, out there, I, when, we, when you get the word that Chantel is organizing this event, and what you can do, Chantel, is make sure that we have um, video photographers there so that you'll take each person not each, uh, as many as you can, and yeah. sit down and talk story with them. And That's you're going to hear more stories from their hearts. You may learn a thing or two more that you were not maybe exposed to. And yeah. um, just let them uh, share all their their great memories of what Spence Cliff had to offer to all of us. I would love that. Yes. I so can. tell us uh, one story that I want you to share, because I just learned about it, about your one of your first, um, I want to say, is it a hotel signature property that was, it, it went it went in the wrong direction because of some political figurehead. I just learned about this the other day from you. So can you yeah. share uh, a little bit about that? Yes, that was uh, one of our flagship restaurants from the very beginning when Spence Cliff started, that was a Queen Surf. Yes. And it was located in Waikiki, across from Kapiolani Park, on the ocean. And we had the Barefoot Bar upstairs with Sterling Mossman and Varroa Tiki and many other entertainers. I believe even Don Ho and also Kui Lee uh, started their careers there. We had Tavana in the Garden Bar. We had Hilo Hattie. I always remember Hilo Hattie having a raccoon tail. She was the <laughs> star of our luau. Anyway, um, my father wouldn't contribute to Frank Fossey's campaign, so Mayor Frank Fossey found a way to shut my father down and turn that location into a park. And many of the uh, people of Hawaii that patronized our restaurants, um, especially the Queen Surf, were up in arms about that. And there were shirts made that said Queen Surf, uh, save Queen Surf. Yes. Wow. Yeah. And so what happened after all the protests and the fight? I mean, what happened to Queen Sir? It, it got demolished and now it's a park. Um, however, that didn't stop my father and his brother from, you know, building or opening up or acquiring another restaurant. They just kept going. Right. Because that was the beginning of the Spence Cliff era, right? That was one of the first. That was one of the first. I believe they also had the um, terminal restaurant um, at the airport. They also serviced the uh, military because we owned a bakery. So we were able to provide, I believe, a lot of roles for um, and other things as well, I'm sure, for the military. Wow. And people may not remember or know, but you had a major catering company. I remember Ala Moana um, Shopping Center. They, they had yeah. the banquet halls. Yes. A lot of the parties and functions we attended was or in those Spence Cliff banquet halls. And we looked forward to all those parties. Yes, we did have the Alamona banquet halls, Alamona coffee shop, as well as Prince Cujillo Hotel, which was downstairs at the Alamona shopping center, closer wow. to the old uh, Sears location. So many great memories, so many. And, you know, thanks to your father and Spence Cliff Corporation, uh, I know that the the, the the gift to all employees were gift certificates yes. to dine at your restaurants. And so I must uh, mahalo all of you because of what you gave to my family. I acquired uh, a gift of appreciating good food. 
and becoming a foodie. And so we <laughs> used those gift certificates. We dined at Yard Harbor Towers, Ranch yeah. House, um, South Seas, um, you name it, we've been there and went to most every of the restaurants because you guys took such great care of my mom and I, as well as when I worked there. So of course we had to mahalo and we appreciated everything that you all stood for, for the love of employees which is so admirable of the Spence Cliff Corporation. So I just wanted to make sure that I had you on today so you could share a little bit about the past with all of us. Thank so you. right now we've come to an end. So I wanted to mahalo, uh, mahalo and mahalo to you, Chantel Weaver, the president and CEO of Spence Cliff Corporation. You've been watching Taking Your Health Back with Wendy. Thank you, Chantel, for talking story with us and taking us down memory lane. So much rich history that you must continue to share it in your documentary, in your upcoming book, and looking forward to the next reunion for all Spence Cliff employees. So once you get the word out, everybody tap your friends and make sure they are there and present because it's going to be documented. Right, son, Chantel? Yes, mahalo, Wendy. Thank you mahalo. so much. Mahalo. We'll be back in a few weeks with Taking Your Health Back with Wendy. Aloha, everyone. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, Please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.